Hello, welcome, and good day to you all. Happy modding, and here we are today on a beautiful Saturday. I am, hey, thank, Gonzo, thank you for the sound check. Appreciate that. We'll jump ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for joining, sir. Glad to see you. Uh, yeah, so welcome back to the stream after a short delay. Back at you with the usual soundtrack playing and props to our authors there and cool we'll just go ahead and put the sound check behind us yay hi <laughs> hey Altario welcome yeah uh hi just um afk for a little while handling one of those uh unmarked quests that life sometimes you know puts in front of you um so here I am yeah we're back Woo, doing stuff and of course the world turns regardless uh and we got some cool changes that have come into OpenMW, you know, while I was sleeping. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And we'll go over that momentarily. Uh, Gonzo was a code archaeologist and uncovered an old feature that I disabled for reasons I can't recall. We'll go into that as well. <clears throat> excuse me. And continuing along here, we got uh, a new mod release. That's a kind of an old thing that I and others put together. We'll look at that. Um, and then I would love to, uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and then we'll take some time to uh, never, no, not usually, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes you get like the interpreter or compiler yelling at you, marking the spot in you know, like an output of mess, but yeah, for sure. Um, at some point, we'll look at a GitLab issues review. There have been quite a few issues handled, but also uh, put in there, you know. So thanks to everybody who's kept that ship going. I really appreciate that. I've managed to, like, hit enter on my keyboard a few times to deploy the website. But, but uh, Gonzo, mad props, has kept the updates rolling and everything. So, uh, and then uh, moving on, though, some uh, short-term plans that I have involve also uh, overhauling the deploy uh, process of the website. Something I've talked about before and wanted to do for a long time, but... Um, you know, just with like me recently being absent. So it's, it's a little, I think, more crucial just to keep the updates flowing, even if I'm not able to hit enter on a keyboard. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we'll deploy the website uh, as needed. There's a couple 6.0 items. Uh, maybe we'll look at it, maybe not. It all depends on how much time we've got. So, uh, yeah, but moving right into the fun stuff. <clears throat> um, if you can go ahead and grab yourself the latest dev build of OpenMW and install these games uh hey what's up catastrophe welcome yeah you're just in time we're gonna look at some fallout here in a moment so yeah um but we're gonna start with oblivion okay and i went ahead and actually got my config set up in advance but basically i installed oblivion follow three uh new vegas gog copies um and i've got their folders set up in a a place let's actually make sure that place is real mm, uh, you know Let's see here. Yeah, so we got, uh, yeah, Oblivion. And uh, because I'm on Linux, I have to run these things with Wine. So that's what this PFX folder. If you've used a Steam Deck, maybe you've been interacted with this kind of a thing. But here we go. Here's our game data, blah. Uh, and it's the same for all three games we'll be looking at here. And, of course, my Morrowind data in there as well. Um, and, yeah, you'll note I've got Fallout 4. Skyrim Special Edition, which the very latest commit actually adds more support for. I didn't extract these just because uh, I'm not really sure how complete it is, but ooh, yeah, wow, exciting. Um, so moving into it then, yeah, we got uh, just a quick overview of what we got here. We got the data path for Oblivion. We've got a boatload of BSA files here. We've got... Uh, yeah, I'd say this is a boatload of, of plugins, right? Interestingly, all the DLC, the DLCs are ESP here. And, um, yeah, that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and I went in advance and what did I got here? Looked on UESP. And if anybody's got a particular Oblivion cell they want us to teleport into, uh, do you still need the Morrowind ESMs? Uh, you know, I didn't try, um without them but i do assume that like some parts of the engine are like hard-coded to initialize morrowind still might cause bad things perhaps we'll try that eventually but in the interest of doing what i've already done before <laughs> yeah i'm not totally sure but uh maybe when we're done with this whole section we'll go ahead and try to load just oblivion and see you know what in todd's name happens so all right i think i'm going to start out here at bravel mages guild unless anybody else has like a request of where to go <clears throat> excuse me 
Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're off. Here we go. There you go, Oblivion.esm. It's happening, folks. Shivering Isles. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll go there. Don't you worry, my friend. Actually, we'll be, you know, as I recall, we'll be right there. Okay, well, then let's get right to it. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep my... Let me set my player. Just for now, we'll go down to 100. And here we are, folks. It's really... It's Oblivion. Beautiful. Yeah, I was thinking recently, like, I want to... Hey, Sophia, welcome. Yeah, this is the real more Oblivion right here. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking, too, man, I want to I play Oblivion. And I installed it on my Steam Deck. And there's, like, some bug where... Um, if you have a controller plugged in, you have to unplug it so the hotkey wheel goes away or something. Um, and on the Steam Deck, it's like, I don't know how to disable Steam input. And, and searching the internet for how to do that hurt my brain, so I gave up. If anybody knows, let me know. I digress. Here we are back in Oblivion, though, um, out of Steam Deck complain land. Let's, uh, shall we venture outside, folks? So, some quick notes. There's, uh, no object paging support. And there's no terrain texture uh, support. So it's going to be just like the default brown texture. No, no, that's the basement. Come on now, here we go. That's the door. Owned, interestingly. Hmm. Alright. Cool, so... Yeah, you know, it looks... I should have ran Mango HUD so we had our, our FPS counter here. Of course, my potato is struggling a little bit, but also like, hey, you know... So we don't have any shaders or anything to, you know, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out. We just got, like, the default Morrowind OpenMW shaders applied here. But, like, yeah, the dynamic shadows obviously are great, you know. Um, yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and boost my speed up just a little bit here. And, yeah, okay, there we go. This is the... So it's still probably going to be ETA 2090. Yeah, right. <laughs> um... It's still going to be ETA 2090 before we're, you know, actually playing Oblivion because there's all kinds of mechanics, other features, you know, that got to be impl implemented. But, I mean, the amount of work that's gone into this is just heroic. And um, there's just so much work and love that went into this. So, yeah, mad props and respect. Yeah, yeah actually, Eltario, I was kind of thinking the same thing, right? Especially with these chimneys. Like, I I'm, like, thinking to myself... I don't remember them now. They're a little shiny, I think. But also, I'm like, I don't remember, you know, just everything kind of. So it'll be really interesting, um, you know, because I know people are using reshade and other things like that to get some nice shaders in Oblivion. But, uh, you know, just to have a native shader framework. All right, let's go outside. Enough dawdling. Here we go. So, yeah, again, no terrain. As you probably noticed, and no object paging. So this is like the... <laughs> any of you who played OpenMW back in the pre-object paging days may recall this look fondly. Um, but yeah, here we are. So it's just cool to see everything happening, you know. Jeez, heroic effort by Capistrophic and, and uh, uh, many others to just make this happen. Okay, I believe we had a request. So as you can see here, yeah, we got a uh, busted up Oblivion Gate, I guess. Spoiler alert. <laughs> kind of all over the place. Wanted to get a nice look at this uh, shrine. Okay. Let's not waste any more time. Not bad music, I guess. <laughs> no, wait, that's not it. It's just like a... There we go. It's not an actual landmass. It's just a bunch of... Yeah, it's just a bunch of meshes plopped into the water. It just works. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. This is going to be, as I recall, a little awkward at first. So, yeah, so here we go. If you've ever played Shivering Isles, you may, may recognize this. And we're just going to poof. Here we go. And so without the landscape textures, obviously, it's a little awkward. But also totally beautiful, you know. Um <laughs> It's like a dream. All right, let's go. 
Which way? Left or right? Madness? Or uh, other one? <laughs> I'm gonna say let's go this way. All right? This is madness, right? Do I get a map? Nope. So yeah, that's another thing, right? Like no map implemented. Obviously the Oblivion map is a completely different beast. Okay, wow, so actually none of this is here, interestingly. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe Shivering Isles, only the beginning part is working, or maybe there's something else going on with these meshes here, but. Curious. Very curious. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I can tell by the <laughs> the painted this should be a city, but there's nothing here. Womp. Okay, let's uh, before we jump out of Oblivion, let's try to see something else in Cyrodiil. Yeah, not it. Yeah, me neither. I'm kind of like, huh? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's find another place. Taking requests until I find something. Um. Okay. Anvil. All right. It's uh, probably some kind of day-night switch on these, I reckon. Hmm. All right. Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna zoom on over. Uh, yeah, here you go, right? <laughs> First look, right here, folks. Surprise preview. Honestly, I think PC's Anvil, you know, no offense to Bethesda, I think it looks better, just saying. Like far, far better. At least the preview one that I saw was just like, oh, wow, you know. All right, I'm going to zoom on over, actually, to Cyrodiil before we jump on out of here and into the Capital Wasteland. Yeah, I think the, something is going on there with the, with the map in the corner, but I don't know what. Oof. Maybe I should have done that nav mesh beforehand. Thing is, you can't, obviously, you can't load, <coughs> excuse me, all the TS4 games at once. Um, for one, because they, uh, at least Fallout 3 and New Vegas both have an update.esm file. And if you load the one from New Vegas for Fallout 3, or vice versa, it's no good. Engine is not happy. Game content is not happy. Maybe you could simply not load update.esm and be without whatever that gives you. Man, I really hope I'm going in the right direction. It's really hard without seeing the... We might just have to do the same thing here. Let's go to Sierra Day. Mm, what's the name of a a shop in Cyrodiil proper? Yeah, Imperial City. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, oh yeah, here we go. Excellent. Mm, right? This should be Cool. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to get a quick look at all this fanciness. Do we get it? Yay. Ooh, wow. All right. So, yeah. Maybe my next Oblivion playthrough will be OpenMW. If I can't get that that controller thing resolved. Uh, yeah, all right. Now, Capital Wasteland time. Let's go. I 
I swear there was an update ESM, but now looking here at the plugins, it's not there. Anyways, when I did, I did actually try to load them all at once, and it did blow up, and I was not surprised. Let's, uh, Fallout 3. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, please, no. If you make a website and you have pop-ups like that, that's bad. No, don't do that. Where do I want to start here? Uh, let's go, I guess just Big Town is uh, okay. Big Town is okay. Let's go right there. Nope. Oops. I goofed something here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we go. It just works. Let's make sure I didn't goof something here. Okay. Yeah, that's loaded. Okay. Maybe I should just not try to. I didn't actually do that before. So let's just load into Morrowind. Maybe I displeased Todd in that way. Oh, nope. Whoops. Hmm. Okay, it's all here. Hmm. Okay, well, this might be a bust. No capital wasteland. Um, we'll have to revisit that another time. Okay. Mojave. Let's go to the Mojave then. Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I was a little nervous there. All right, Fallout New Vegas. Todd Willing will make it to the to the Mojave. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Boone, my, one of my besties. Here we are. Ooh, yeah, we're in Novak. Uh, let's go ahead and that tab is already annoying me. So yeah, again, same situation. No object paging, no terrain, but yeah. Here it is. I was actually half tempted to try and load a mod. You know, like... Uh, true to Kaisar, brother. Yeah, so just... It'll be great when we can actually play it in 2090. Plus or minus. But for now, this is just a really neat... <laughs> you know, it's a neat experience. If not a little off-putting. <sighs> But this will be great for multiplayer, too. With the twist of uh, Vats that doesn't pause the game. <laughs> Speaking of true to Kaisar, we're heading down here. We'll load this. I love New Vegas, so I'm probably going to go look at a few things. Whoa, yeah, okay.
Neat. Yeah, I like to hide out up here with a sniper rifle and just... You know, you played the game, you know what I'm talking about. My bestie Boone and I, we just hang out right there. Okay. I can more blindly navigate this train a bit more than, uh, than Oblivion. I think also, obviously, based on a scaled-down map of the region with some tweaks, so it's a bit more flat than Cyrodiil. Oh, here we go. Helios. <laughs> well, that's a great question. Eltorial, thank you. Um, my assumption is yes in a 0 0.49 build. I don't see what would stop you. Um, and so I think the expectation is right now all the TES4, so Oblivion, Fallout 3, New Vegas stuff should work. Um, if I take a quick look here, I'm going to keep that running, but just... Uh, uh, and we can see the latest commit here. Fallout 4 SSE support improvements. So um, that's why I was a little tempted to load that up too and see. Maybe in a future stream I want to play around with it off stream first. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's happening <laughs> also. Um, yeah, totally. I love it. Those uh, those folks, OpenMW devs. Among their other abilities that I love, they have an ability for... Uh, hilarious branch names that I truly appreciate. Just gonna make it into the strip before we call it a day here. Checking out some landmarks along the way. Oop. Grub and gulp. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, better out of the box, right? New Vegas, Fallout 3, you know, Oblivion, they don't really have shadow quality level that we have right here, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not sure what's going on here. <laughs> uh, you know. So can I get into Freeside? Yeah. I almost never, and by almost I mean absolutely never play without Freeside Open, or whatever the modern one is called anymore. Yeah, there you go. Everything needs to be like <laughs> yellow filtered. Yeah, right. Agreed, Sophia. I remember last time we tried this, it was kind of a, you know, but I mean, even without the landscape, it's like, whoa, this is it. Hence why I was a little tempted to throw some texture mods in there and to be like, now, does, you know, is that going to upset the gods? Or... But yeah, it's it's jarring for me to not be able to just walk straight through here. Ooh, and I don't think the door is here. Yeah, <laughs> it's nostalgic. Let's slow down a lot. Oh, no. Where's my activator? Okay. No problem. There should be another way over. No, no, no. Fort. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is even a different cell. Wow. I've been so long since I played without the... There's a mod that makes it all one cell. Same with the strip. A modern one even, too. Um, let me... Uh, actually, let's... Just to give it props. And there's um, a strip counterpart, but yeah, simple open freeside. It's what you want if you're playing New Vegas today. Um, and yeah, this makes it all one cell. You know, the reason why it's all chopped up, I assume, is because PlayStation 3 version had to happen with their 256 megabytes of VRAM. 
And, you know, these are some busy cells too, right? Like, looking pretty good. Wow, yeah. Totally forgot. A modern machine can easily handle all this as one cell. Without even breaking a sweat, really. So there's some, like, stuff here that's missing, for sure. Right, there's, like, some fixture here with some, uh... The wheelie bots that appear to be missing. So I guess not everything is working right now. Yeah, we got some... We got some errors here. Alpha controller, yeah. Seems like nearly close to everything, though, is just working beautifully. Ah, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Too. They're so similarly to open freeside. Um, open strip just makes these three cells all one. And it's a little weird. And <laughs> see them in PS3 mode, we'll call it. Uh, so yeah, we're missing. Interestingly, I don't know if this is the same effect, but there's like a yellow kind of effect that draws like on the edge of these. Um, and like the way some of these lights are lit up is like a certain effect that I don't think is, is working at the moment. Ooh, not sure what's going on here. <laughs> Michelangelo. All right, yeah. Yeah, something like that ghost asphalt. And let's go, since we're here, let's check out a vault. Oh, <laughs> yeah, door working technically. <laughs> Even without all the right shaders, the interior looks pretty good. You know. Oh, no. <laughs> Gary. Yeah, for sure. There has to be like a, oh man, we need a something like that for Morrowind. Preferably relating to Fargoth. Going to lower my desk, excuse me. <laughs> hey Fane, hey, welcome, yeah. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, we're back after a little bit of a hiatus. Just checking out some of the new uh, TES4, you know, plus support here. I got uh, Nerevarine just hanging out in the vault. Uh, specifically, this is some New Vegas stuff we're looking at here. Um, vault 21. Cool. Yeah. Wow, it's neat to see. I don't ever like TCL when I play New Vegas, really. Oh, see, so look at all the lights popping in and out, too. <laughs> it's really, uh, yeah, for sure. Exactly, Altario. It's exactly what I'm feeling right now. We need, I don't know, some way to make Radio New Vegas lower friendly to Morrowind. Put your thinking caps on. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Yeah, okay, well, so there you have it. I think this basically concludes our look at the the new asset support. And yeah, probably in the next coming weeks, I'll, uh, we'll take a look at what Skyrim's, you know, special edition looks like, Fallout 4 look like with the current level of support. Uh, let's just zoom in on this pool table here real quick. Caught my eye. All right, yeah, wow. Very exciting stuff.
All right, Gonzo. Yeah, we'll see ya. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I totally intended to check those off as we went, but phew. cool. All right. So, yeah, as I mentioned, going uh, back to the website itself now, um, as I mentioned, Gonzo was the uh, code archaeologist, and he found... Uh, an old section that I had written some time ago and uh, for whatever reason disabled it. Let's just go open it up right here. There you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the section. Comment it out. So we'll go ahead and once the website's up, just gonna crunch some tests here. Um, ooh, I usually do it in Emacs. See how long it's been? Wow. Anyways, the intention of this section was to give somebody a one-liner command. You know, PowerShell on Windows or, or Bash on some Unix OS that they could copy-paste and just create all the folders they need um, if they were doing, you know, a manual install or maybe, I don't know, maybe David and help to uh, have that for people that use tooling like a mod manager software. So to that end, we're going to go ahead and comment this out and we're going to make the feature hat. We're going to bring it back, but we also want to make sure that it jives with our um, JavaScript that gives you your custom folder path here. So we'll, we'll make sure that works. Um, Come back to this. It's crunching away. Okay. Excuse me. All right. What do we do? Here we go. So this information here, if you are noticing some of the contents here, we've got a couple of variable variables we're, we're expanding to make the magic happen. Cats string, mods string, win string. Um, and this stuff comes from the back end. Oh, quiche. Welcome back, Gonzo. I am hungry. I got some grapes here, though. Um, we'll keep the breakfast a little bit light. Smalley got a new desk, so we're going to build that after the stream. I'm very excited. That uh, monstrosity you see behind me is finally getting dismantled and going away. So, ooh, very excited. She also got, like, a new uh, mechanical keyboard that's very cool. Uh, so, anyways, though, uh, as I was saying, this is from... This stuff there is all from a, a Python function, as uh, is basically everything else. And we, what I did was, because it was just easier to do it in Python than trying to do it here in the template, you know, um, we did this, I did this um, in Python, and then I passed the stuff to the template already kind of figured out. So I kind of, I think I kind of want to keep doing it that way just because it's easier to work in Python, you know, and uh, this is the kind of thing where, yeah, it doesn't change unless the content of the website changes, you know, and we would do a deploy and update the website so I can aggressively cache the page. Um, so if there's any kind of performance cost to load the page, it would be, you know, once every six hours to whatever unlucky viewer happens to get the cold cache, the stale cache. So anyway, let's go back to the terminal. Here we go. All right, but, but we're going to go ahead and, as is tradition, open up the e-shell. There we go. Now everything feels right again. And uh, so now that I've uncommented that, GS directories, I think it's called what? Folder paths or managing mods, I think. Yeah, that's what we call it now. Mm, yep, this page. Yeah, here we go. Huh. Okay, so this is... I, uh... You know, I wonder if... How much of this just works. <laughs> also, anybody who knows anything about CSS... Here's a puzzle I've been working on for some time. Cool. Okay, I'll deploy it shortly to the beta site. If you want to test it out. 
Um, I assume this is correct. Yeah, looks good. Um, oh, you know what? This, okay, it's not exactly perfect. So we'll need to, this, I don't think we'll be able to be a one-liner. What we'll do is we'll like have a couple command, one command for each. Because um, what it's going to do is it's going to create like every folder and every category. It's a little sloppy. Okay, I think that's why I disabled it now that I'm looking at it. Because this bash, I can tell you right now, I don't know Jack about PowerShell. So I can't really comment about this. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what's going on here. It's like making all the categories and then all the mods are going in all the categories. And that's not exactly right. Uh, maybe there's a way to do it in a one-liner. But so I think what we'll do is we'll have for bash, for example, this is like a POSIX shell example. We'll have a make dir call. Yeah, uh, uh, what do you mean by that, Gonzo? Uh, CFG type output, like the... Um, like what we're doing on that page specifically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it would just be like a, a code block with maybe, you know, just one make dir call for each. Um, yeah, exactly. Line by line. Exactly. Yep. One, one so it would be one line specifically for each category. And then um, the, the second part here that has the actual, it's so long, that has the actual mod names. Yeah, you can see here denoted by the slash and then the opening curly brace. And we start having mod names here. Simply walking, blah, blah, blah. Um, so each of the category calls for Maker and the PowerShell equivalent. We'll probably do the same thing with PowerShell. Um, so yeah, anybody who knows PowerShell a little bit or a lot, definitely going to need to... Maybe I'll install the Linux PowerShell. That's fun. Hold on. Ha! Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can just use it in a Docker even. Hey, Joto. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, right. Sacrilege. I mean, if I could just run it in a Docker, that's like a pretty, you know, hey, I'm not even really installing it on my system, am I? Hmm. Okay. Well, so, hey. Oh. All right. It's just a container, exactly. All right, I, I'm sorry. I have to see this right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've already got Alpine. All right, here we go. Um, okay, I forget even how to install crap with Alpine. Hold on. Uh, no, no. Of course, I shameless plug for my mock MW uh, Docker container, which uh, can let you build plugins by effectively linking against fake versions of all these proprietary plugins. These are just blanks. Norlin.yaml. Just a big nothing in there, and they're all just like this. Um, anyways, little diversion there. I wanted to see how I'm installing stuff. It's just APK add, but how do you? All right. APK list list. Hey! Oh. Uh, yes, uh, Joe Toho, great question. Um, this is exactly that. Um, before we dive into PowerShell, since you mentioned it, I'll go ahead and demonstrate how I do this with every single one of my mods that has a plugin. So, um, now note, um, you know, I do GitLab and CI and stuff professionally for my job, so that's why everything's really fancy. Uh, but let's pick a mod with a plugin. Here we go Natural Character, Growth, and Decay. And so um, I, what I have is a CI setup, 
where when I push my code to GitLab, it runs a job that uses my mock MW image, the one that we're looking at right here. If you're not familiar with Docker, Docker is basically a, a Docker file is a format to basically say, I need an OS and I need to do these things and then give me the result. So what you have here is a, a Alpine. Uh, oh yeah, actually I do some nice multi-stage stuff here to save space. Um, you can say, uh, Yep, yep, cool, cool. Yeah, Docker is actually, once you kind of like wrap your head around what is actually good and what it's actually bad for. Um, my opinion, building stuff is like what it's perfect for. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, give me Alpine Linux, this specific version, uh, install some stuff, download some stuff, unzip it, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm also saying as setup. And then if you'll notice down here, I'm saying copy from setup. So that way, I, what I'm doing is I'm taking the plugins that I created in this step right here but I'm not taking all the things I installed. And that's what keeps the Docker image size really, really small. It's like only a couple megabytes. And this is a, a Docker multi-stage build is the name of this pattern that I'm using here. Um, so anyway, go, though, going back to GitLab, it pulls my image down. When I do a git push, it runs the script uh, to build the plugins. So if we look at the build sh here for ncgd lua, We've got a bunch of Delta plugin calls, um, which we are also copying the Delta plugin binary. Oh, cool, neat. Caddy. Ah, I've, I've heard so much about Caddy. It's one of those I need to check things, but it seems perfect for a Pi setup. That's cool. But yeah, as you can see here, so the build, the build runs my script, which calls Delta plugin, which turns the YAML file into the plugin, and. Long story short, the Rube Goldberg machine produces a thing that people can download. Um, and so for my mods, I published that on a website, which is right here. And so yeah, when you go to any of my mod websites and you click the download button or you click the dev build button, that plugin actually is built by the GitLab CI robots from a text file um, against my fake data files. Um, so yeah, that's how the machine works. Oh, that was a fun diversion. <laughs> okay, so yeah, what do we want to do here? Um, back to the dynamic pages. So what we want... Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Before we go there, though, we want PowerShell. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I like It's what I do professionally, so, you know, I like to, I like to talk about it if people want. So, okay, here we go. Power show. Oh, wait. Hmm. How do I... It's installed. Package information. I'm trying to see if there's a command to list what a package has, like void Linux has a x locate command. Something like that. I don't see it though. How weird. Okay, well, clearly it was installed. Some stuff we got .NET, you know, some Microsoft y stuff was pulled in. Runtime, PowerShell. I'm just not sure. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We're, I'm going to have to revisit that. Bummer. Oop, as I punch my mic, excuse me. Um, so anyway, maybe so maybe we can maybe we can test this um in CI even, you know, um because I do have a C GitLab CI for the website. Erm, um, hey, welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining, man. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to go ahead and uh, we'll make a few Makedir strings here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to have one for each category. Um, yeah, so each category. Hmm. So this would be interesting. Um, hmm. 
So what we want to do is we want to have instead of cat string, we're going to have like a list of cat strings. It doesn't really matter what order they're in. We just need a blanket, create a bunch of stuff. Um, and I'm going to separate it by Linux. Um, I'll just call it Unix, since the same would apply to Mac, which a modern Mac is. Um, What's with all the cats? <laughs> yeah, so taking a step back, we are, uh, there's an old feature I had on the website, mostly useful for people who aren't using a mod manager software, where there was like a, a code block where you could just copy paste and make their command. And it would make all the folders, all the category folders, all the mods in the categories, but uh, it was a little janky. It didn't quite work right, so I commented it out. Gonzo discovered it, and, um, and it's, I think, a useful thing to have as long as it's not too complicated to implement properly. Um, so we're revisiting that right now. That's with all the cats. And so for Windows, um, we'll just do categories, Windows. And so I guess what we could have is, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Just generate the file that they could download and double click, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for each mod list even, ooh, that's a, that's something I didn't even think about, but yeah, we can have like a, you know, select your, select your preset, like a drop down box, select your preset and it would spit out it. Cause this is just, I think, total overhaul, hard coded to total overhaul. Yeah. You can see my query set here. Ooh, that's a great idea. All right. Oh, okay. Gonzo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gonzo and I were chatting privately, but uh, I guess there was a disconnect in my comprehension. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Cool. Okay. We're all on the same page. So we want to have a Yeah, 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 exactly. Erm, you got it. So our long-term plan um is to allow like a Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, so yeah, that's a great point, Erm. So one feature that we want to do and I think would be doable in the near term is we could utilize JavaScript local storage. And so like you could make a mod list and save it on, you know, on your browser. Um, and it would persist, uh, you know, until you clear your browser cache or whatever. Um, and yeah, the, the CFG generator or any page that does something like this could read that. Um, it will be tricky to do for stuff like this because we would have to have like the JavaScript talking with the back end, you know? So this is where we get into the realm of a little bit of complexity, but um, I don't think it would be that bad. And yeah, so that's a long-term goal for sure. You know, or like, yeah, maybe we could have like a submit form where we like the drop-down box is like my personal list and then it sends to the back end and the back end crunches. Yeah, that, that could work. Yeah, great idea. Um, and we also need to actually put it in the HTML because we need to uh, I'm hoping my hope is we just load the JavaScript and it just works uh, something tells me it won't be so but let's actually try that now This needs to be, Gonzo, if you think about it, if you feel like it, um, we need to, what we need to do is like make this a template, like the, the default JavaScript for stuff. And uh, rather than just copying this on a bunch of pages, I don't know, maybe it's not an issue because I'm not going to use everything here. Not using this, not using this, not that, or that. Okay. So now... As I said, will it just work? Hmm, no dice. Yeah, so that's another... It's another thing we'll have to do before we... Um, ship this feature. Okay. 
So we're going to keep it simple here. Trying to remember my. I don't really like. This is why I kind of don't like list comprehensions. I'm trying to remember what what exactly is this doing here. The syntax is succinct, for better or for worse. I'm putting in a name of him. Okay. Do I do I do something hideous here? Yeah, I do. Okay. So I think what we want to do is we're going to gank this out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, and it's just like an all-in-one, like a, I don't know. Sometimes it makes sense. In Lua, sometimes if I have like a quick return, you know, I like to do that in one line. Sometimes it makes sense, but this is, I don't know, I think this is Python syntax sugar kind of being nasty. We're going to take this out. But first, actually, I need to look at the JavaScript. We have to. Okay. Home username. Okay, so it should. All right. So if I just use these defaults, then I would expect this to just work. By the grace of Todd. Okay. Let's proceed like it will. Um, and so, Unix string, uh, actually, we're going to need Mac string. Python probably won't be as cool about it. The forward slash. How much you want to bet it's going to complain? Yeah. Thank you, editor. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no. No, no. That's not what you want. <laughs> I mean, that's LSP mode. Language server, you know, coming into play here, so... Got the lawnmower firing up. Um, okay. <sighs> so, so for each one we want to, um, let's take our Linux string. Oh wait. Clean name. And then honestly, I'm not gonna right, I'm gonna Hey hey! Welcome! Commander Hunter 5. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Just uh hacking on the website here like we do. Uh trying to trying to make this feature happen where people can make the right folders. With just one click or download a, a thing, they can execute to help them. All right. So the question is, do we? Yeah, yeah, right. So the intention is, uh, thank you. Uh, so the intention is to make it easy for folks because not everybody, like probably probably most folks on Windows are going to use Mod Organizer 2. But, um, you know, it's not the most well-supported thing, unfortunately, on Mac or Linux. Um, as a Linux user myself, you know, I empathize with that situation. And it's though, you know, I think it's pretty a no brainer to provide this for folks. So that's what we're trying to do right now. Just taking it slow though. And let's get a whoa, what's going on here? Get my shell output there. Alright. So Okay. Um I, it just seems too simple to work as I expected to on the first try. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, because I'm not, okay. Whoops, there we go. Hup. 
Hmm. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay. So we don't want this. We want... And we can't mix Mac and Linux. Don't even try it. And we need uh, this, right? <laughs> right? I'm a bit rusty, excuse me. Didn't do much hacking. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That's what we want. Step one achieved. Uh, however, you'll note here that we've got the presence of, for example, the multiplayer category. No multiplayer mods in total overhaul. <laughs> Not yet, at least. So we're going to have to be a little more judicious than just this. Um, and so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, is this even the right approach? I don't, I don't think so. So we go through each mod, we look at the category, we say, is it in the categories that we have? If it is, then we'll, we'll do something. If it's not, we'll do something else. And we'll, uh, so if it is in there, eh, no, it's not exactly going to work. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good call out, Gonzo. And also, yeah, Joe Toho, I have actually, I've tried to run MO2 on Linux, you know, just for the morbid curiosity of it all. Um, and it's a bad, it's just generally speaking a bad time. It's not something that we could really easily do um, a port for, you know, unfortunately. Right, okay. Good call out, Gonzo, by the way. Um, so I think what we need to do... Uh, that's an Altariel. You get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, Emacs is my mod manager, okay? Um, and I know, like, that sounds terrible, but I don't know. Like, okay, we're diverting here. Thank you, folks. <laughs> I've been waiting all day. Um, you know, I, I put all my config in a Git repo. Well, yeah, exactly. It's bad to lose, install, save games, blah, blah, blah. Like... You don't play your game for six months or whatever. You fire up your mod manager and now that's broken in some way. And it's just like, you know, whereas when I've got plain text I'm working with in a Git repository, I can like see exactly what's changing. You know, I can have a history of it over time. Um, I realize that's a stretch for a lot of folks who don't use text editors or Git. This is just what works for me, though. Um, and honestly, I think for I think for some people, it's not too much of a leap. And it will help you kind of understand, like, oh, yeah, this is this is what the engine's doing. And it's not all black magic from the brain of Todd. Um, <laughs> yes, back to it now. So, so taking a step back, the CFG generator already does what I'm trying to reinvent badly, by the way, here. Yeah, data paths. Gonzo is starting to know the website, by the way, better than me. So, haha, <laughs> props to Gonzo on that. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not where I want to kill the new line. Come on now. There you go. So, hey, let's just straight up delete all this hideous code.
me forgetting how my website works. And so what we need is this one right here. Can I do this? No. I used to have a shortcut where if I shift left clicked on something, it would take me to the implementation. I gotta fix that. I changed language server backends and now I don't have it anymore. Mod. Mod data. Come on now, what did I call this thing? Data path. It doesn't have a mod in it. This thing here. This is what I want because this gives me everything I need. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. That is, in my opinion, a great way to just also, like, learn to program, you know, because, um, yeah, you know, you're solving a, a lot of different problems, uh, and it requires you to think about, you know, various edge cases, right? Like, just think about all the different ways you've seen a mod be packaged. And now, welcome. You have to handle, well, you can decide what you want to handle. You don't have to handle everything, right? If I was going to, for example, make a mod manager, I would choose specifically a subset of package types that I'd want to handle. Uh, and then make exceptions, you know, rarely. Um, but yeah, cool. That's a cool project. Please keep us updated on that. Uh, feel free to join the Discord channel for the website and yeah, share your work there. Many people would be up, uh, interested in checking it out. All right. So do I, data, I got it here. This is what I get for not looking at the website code for some time. Okay, total overhaul, oh, The new stuff is so new that my brain forgot how it all works. So let's go up here and revisit how we're doing this. Data. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Um, interesting that it just prints out Linux. That feels wrong. I assume, for those of y'all that use Windows, that this show, CFG Generator, shows Windows pads. Yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. It does. Okay. Huh. Yeah, see, this is me, like, forgetting totally how this works, even. Uh, let's go ahead and... Let's explore my code, shall we? Okay, Linux gives us a this, okay. Where does Windows happen though? Surely it does. Not once on the page. Wow, I'm flummoxed. Past me was maybe a little too clever. Or is this perhaps JavaScript? I see. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, there's one thing I can do here. The benefit of having the code right in front of me. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. It does just work, huh? Yeah. Oh, this is a... I need to scrub out those parts of my brain. All right, I got my Windows path here. It's not replacing like it should. That works for you, Gonzo, uh, if you put your custom path. Like if I... Oh, okay. No, yeah, it has my current one in there. G drive... Hmm. Oh, yeah, I got you. Okay. Does uh so but I assume this replacement here 
works for you and something is just funny business going on here. Well. <laughs> I was expecting something to blow up and reveal itself here. Alright. Um, okay, we are loading it. It is readable. Okay. Don't you just love it when something else breaks while you're doing something else? Alright, well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's when I like to use home Vargoth is when I go for I'll just do like slash a or something really short This should work though. Hmm. Oh, hmm. Well Let's, let's just do that for posterity Yeah, well, what's going on? Oh, so this happened to you the other day, Gonzo? It, it didn't replace your folder pass? We might have a deeper bug going on here, folks. My janky JavaScript. Um, okay. Which, as you can see, is actually not really doing a whole lot. Okay, so this is where we decide to skip because this is handled by a different file. We just add what's there. We don't try to replace it. I do this every now and then as a sanity check. If I don't see the... Whoops. If I don't see... Uh, something I expect we might have to also there you go code is running okay good spam yeah oh oh would you look at that see I had to say something now who's cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Shucky darn dang. There we go. Good deal. So that tells me... <laughs> Whoops. Don't you just love that kind of stuff? This is like on the, in my opinion... Kind of on the level of the escaping the quotes in Tamil. Todd, help us. There we go. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Smalio. Yes. We need that. I got to figure out how to do uh, Twitch emotes or something. All right. So does that mean that this, hold up, so does that mean uh, the thing that I was doing before this is going to work? Mm. I forget how to get to the page otherwise. Hmm. 
Okay. It's loading it here correctly. Um, oh, you know what it's looking for? Yeah, it's looking for a specific element, two specific elements. So maybe I don't need a nested if here. That's another thing. We can clean up this JavaScript just a little bit. We should, um, but I'll play with that later. Okay, so we want baster, we want this one, which comes from local storage, and then we need data paths code, we need this data paths. Okay. It's got to be ID data paths too. Will it just work? Hmm? Hey, <laughs> cool. Neat. That didn't just work. Oh, because that's a... Hmm, yeah. It will just work down here, hopefully. We'll, <laughs> we'll probably have to... Ooh, yeah. We'll probably have to do something for Windows. I don't know. But cool, this worked at least. So I got that going for me. Neat. All right. Let's get back to it. Uh, oh, yeah. There we go. Ooh. So this isn't this isn't quite right. I need some capabilities that I don't have right now. Um We need a good way to find all the find all categories in a mod list. Because right now there isn't a there isn't a really good way to do that, and this is a not. This took a long time because it was just printing, but still, it's like not a good performance-wise, computation-wise. It's not a good it's not a good way to do it. What we want to do is we want to make a a specific specifically tuned database query that will do the least amount of work possible just to get the things we need. Um, and and so for that we would need to look at something like. We got listed mods here, which holds information about a mod, what mod list it's on, the order number in that mod list, and some other things. Um, and it's kind of like glue to tie those things together. And I feel like that could go here or it could go here. Me. We have to, I have to be really careful about this kind of thing because the what you're seeing here is the database schema, if you're not familiar with database nomenclature terminology. And this is like the, the layout of the data in the database, and it was made by me, and I'm not like a database expert by any means. I've just been doing this for fun. Um, and so I have very likely made some mistakes in the layout 
that cause things to be not efficient, but also I'm using this framework that is Python code to query the database, which itself makes assumptions to make things easy and thus there's a performance cost there too. So all that adds up to where you'll notice when I'm here and I hit uh, refresh here and it's spinning and it doesn't do this on the main website because I've got caching going on and, and it's a little bit, you know, there's other things going on, but it takes a couple of seconds, and that's because the database is crunching and crunching. And so, long story short, I haven't done things completely optimized, although I have made attempts to optimize and be thoughtful. But we need to be very careful, because we don't want to add to the page load time. And I don't want to require a stronger server. Right now, the server bill is pretty low. I want to keep it that way. Um, so what I need here... It's not going to be, this is not going to be a good query in any way we look at it. Okay. Keep coming back to this. Because I think this has everything we need. We got four mod. And mod has the category. Yeah. Okay. We're back to what I had a minute ago. Yeah, this is exactly right here. This is how I feel right now. <laughs> colon V, colon angle bracket. Okay. And you know, um, for now, I'm just going to use Linux paths. But an interesting side effect of that will be um, if I put up, you know, a Windows path in, in there, it's going to just, it'll just replace it without much fuss. So, so yeah, for, for now, we'll keep it that way. I don't know if we'll ship it that way. Maybe we will. We'll see. Okay. Oh, that's a will. Uh, yeah, very good. And actually, you know what? We need a bit more than just a list. We need a dictionary. Because what I want to do is I want to take the dictionary and I want to give it a... Yes. <laughs> We're doing some real programming right now, folks. What I want to do is... And this is why a dictionary works better for this. It's going to be a better programming pattern-wise. Um, I want to be able to say, give me this clean cat's dictionary... I'm going to give you a, a clean name of a category and you give me the list of categories I already have. And that's an easy way of saying, have I already touched this category? Have I already, you know, so I can get each category once. There's probably another function too that would like sort, uniqueify the list too, but uh, we're not going to go down that route. Uh, okay. Update. So we're going to do... Uh, And note, what I'm, what I'm going to do here is because every time I draw a period here, and by the way, the same thing applies for many parts of the OpenMW Lua API, but anytime I put a period here, one, two, three, that's a database query. So every period costs you performance, right? Where one, doing a query here, probably multiple queries, another query here. So just something to keep in mind for each you know, uh, one of these, we're hitting it here. And I was just about to put this in here too. We're going to hit it twice. We can at least maybe, you know, do. Save us maybe a couple microns. I don't know. Um, and really.
Tell me what I'm doing wrong. So the test for membership should be not in. Thank you. No, that's wrong. Tell me again, language server. Test for membership should be not in. Oh, I see, clean name, yeah. If clean name, not in. Yeah, okay, whatever. All right. So what's this, what's this give us? I was hoping we would get this banged out before the end of the, yeah, right? He's actually on my desk now. I, when I started feeling better, um, when I was AFK, I like reconfigured my desk and I've got, uh, I got friends on my desk now. We got VV right here helping us troubleshoot. And the snake is actually around, wrapped around my speaker. So I'm not going to bust him out, but yeah, he's here. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to clean cats. Oh my, where am I? I'm all over the place. Oh yeah, we got some stuff we didn't get to yet too. We might we might pause this for a moment and look at cuz I got something that I worked on. Okay. Give me the whoop. Whoa. What did I do wrong? Oh, <laughs> whoops. This is wrong, folks. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna. What was the what was the path I was printing just a moment ago? Let's travel back in time, everybody. Emacs and it's infinite. There we go. P Linux. That's what I needed. Emacs has the infinite undo. By the way, you've never seen a text editor that actually implements properly. Infinite undo, I assure you. I think it's working. No, it's not going to. Oof. Big oof. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Clean cats update. Oh, did I? Huh? Oh, yeah. This is blowing up. Let's just placate the interpreter for now. We'll give it the strings that it thinks it wants. Will it blend? Uh, it's not a good sign. It shouldn't take this long. Oh. Well. It worked, and I can't say I'm very pleased about it. Um, because this should not take that long. What the heck happened? A thousand queries? Oh, no. Oh, man. Yeah, so I think what I need here is a select related, which is a database hack. One weird trick that might help us here. Hang on. We do that in dynamic pages. All right. Select related. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we are kind of, we're going deep into the weeds here. So taking a step back, if you're not sure what I just looked at and what I got alarmed by, it's this right here. This is, this is the Django debug toolbar. Django is this Python code that I use that helps me build the website. And it, the debug toolbar lets me look into the guts of the code to see how badly I'm performing. <laughs> and what you can see right here is it says 1,134 queries. And if I click on this, it is amazingly going to tell me just how bad I am. And you can see here right at the top. I have a nested query that is effectively repeated, you know, 566 times. And it's just, it's linear. 
by a couple powers, you know, just blowing up. And that's why it took forever. So what we can do is we can perform an SQ, what's called an SQL join, which is a way to uh, more effectively grab data from different parts of the database together. And this select related is a way to do it with Django. So bear with me here while I try to making the DB do less work. So the DB is doing all the work, but I'm like whipping it horribly right now and we're gonna try to whip it less. <laughs> related for mod. This may not be enough. We may also have to try select related on, on the inner query on the category, but let's just see, does that save us anything? So we got 1,100, 1,134 queries. Do we save any? No. Well, hey, two queries. All right. There you go. This is... Yikes. Okay. That's the... This is how you optimize your code, friends. You just delete it. Okay. I'll put that right here, maybe. There we go. Okay, so it was 1,130-something. Or 1,130-something for... Ooh, look at that, 568 queries. Magic, can we do better? No, it's not gonna go there. Much better, but we can. possibly do even better. All right, Gonzo. 568 down to three. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Because this is not a query set. This is just one thing. Okay. I'm going to put a to do here to, to research the internals of select related. Can we select related on the thing we're selecting relating, you know, so we're in advance querying the details of the mod. Looking back at the database model, we have this, which stores the information about our data path. It has a relation, foreign key in database nomenclature to a mod. We're selecting that in advance with the SQL join right here in the related. But can we also join the mods category, which would, you know, so this is where we're bumping into kind of the limitations of the expressiveness of what we can do with raw Python translated to SQL or what I could do with like an actual just getting into the SQL, you know, shell and writing raw SQL myself. We could do that. Um, that's like beneath the weeds, but also like to the bedrock level. That's so deep. <laughs> so maybe we won't need it um, because even if it performs, you know, 500 queries, I mean, it's a lot especially for what we're trying to do, you know. It's not a small number, but maybe it's enough when we have the caching of the real website, you know, to help us cheat. But, I mean, cutting it in half is an acceptable win, or close to cutting it in half, I think. Yeah, see, so the remaining thing we need to join, you can see the inner join happening right here, yippee. So I want to put a note here to do. Welcome back, Gonzo. Just kind of looking at the guts of the SQL query, and we can see the join happening, which is giving us that performance boost. And yeah, we just need a. I want to put a note here to look. Can we join on for mod category? Because that would be then the next level to even cut it in half, you know, and then it would be a little bit more snappy because. Um, you know, <laughs> this is not all the work. We still have to go through all the mods and blah, blah. There's more crunching. So oof, it's only going to get worse from here. All right, back to it. Uh, you know what? So I think what we need, we need a heading. Doing it manually, and then we need like a subheading. Excuse me. Or, no, no. Yeah, it's already a link. Cool. Ooh. 
Thank you, past me. Okay. So, let's go back to my map idea here. Excellent. Yeah. So... This is a special case we're going to have to handle. It looks like it's working the way I want it to. Okay, so cool. <sighs> okay, so we got already kind of a mildly complex thing going on here that we have mitigated a little bit with the help of a SQL join. Thank you, Postgres. I love you. So now we need to look at all of our mods, and we need to put those where they need to be. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for mod and mods. If, uh, so I suppose I don't even need to So I'm trying to think now. So there's a few things that we have to insert. For, and since we're working with Linux, Unix style at first, what we need is, <clears throat> so we've got home, Fargoth, Morrowind. Imagine this is mods. Imagine this is our base folder. We need something like this first, and then this, not the close one, and then we start, you know, uh, pasting our categories in. So what we have here is actually not quite, this is not actually quite right. Mm, okay, so. Okay, that's fine. That's acceptable. I'm going to keep this just to... Um, it's going back to being just a list. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Once I print this, we're going to take a small diversion because I want to look at, before the stream ends today, I want to look at some cool new stuff. Uh, things that are definitely going on the next update. Oh, no, it blew up. Oh. There we go. Don't mind me just casually breaking everything. Um, yeah, but I want to show the Dwemer lightning rods that I mentioned at the at the beginning of the stream. And also another really exciting new Lua mod. I think some of you have already seen it. Okay. Um,
tell me what our strip does. I can't remember which one just gets the. Come on. All right, I'm just gonna try that one. I want to take out the last comma. That's what's going on in my brain right now. In case you're curious, what's he thinking? Don't try that at home, folks. Okay. Hmm. Hey, oh no, that worked. That worked. That actually worked. Check it. All right. Yeah. So we got one. If you are on Linux, for example, or Mac, you could type this. And uh, that would, uh, let's. Yeah, here we go. So this is all the categories. And then so what we'll do is on the website, we will uh, we'll give people this as one command. And then the next command would be, you know, make their minus P, uh, you know, patches, fixes, one line for each of these categories. And then it would have a similar kind of thing where we got the open brace with each of the mod names, blah, blah, blah. Cool. I love it. Uh, let's go back to the to-do list. Um, we looked at this, got pretty far with it, but I want to, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, th I think it's, um, there's a little more that has to go into it, right? So like sussing out this part where we then like put the mods in, but I don't think it's going to be much different than what we got right here. And this is not like too bad. Um, we got to keep the database queries down, but um, what we'll do probably following the stream I'll put that on the beta website and then we can see what it actually looks like with the caching in front of it um, to kind of save our butts a little and then yeah we gotta you know we gotta put uh, I might just have it always be a Linux based string and then encourage users to set their own and our JavaScript will replace that it will just work okay so yeah uh you may recall on a previous stream, I covered um, this little project, which was uh, basically to take the MWSE Lua Dwemer Lightning Rods script, um, which, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I basically sat there, I turned the weather on, and then I'm like, I'm going to record like a minute or two of lightning strikes and I'll get like the I'll get one that looks cool. Um, but as I was saying, this is an implementation of the MWSE Lua script, which would, if, uh, let's, let's take a look at it, what it does, shall we? Um, the storm lightning rods. And it doesn't do a lot. Uh, it doesn't do a lot. I removed the Windows line endings. That's what I did just now. You might have noticed the carriage M. Um, just takes the takes the thing we want to replace, thing we want to replace it with, with some offsets that I have actually have no idea how they came up with those. I just used them in my script, um, which I will open here on the side. And what's important to note about this, though, is that this pattern can be used to automatically replace anything, really. Um, but what we're doing here is I added this stuff to, to kind of help people install the mod correctly, but as you'll see here, we're first checking for OpenMW49, 0 0.49. We're then checking for OAAB data. That's the only dependency of the mod, obviously, aside from Morrowind. And then we look and see if this is loaded. You don't need this when you're using the Lua version. You don't need the ESP. Unload it. Please disable it. 
Okay, and then we get down to the business though. We load the, you know, the Lua API code that we need. Seems familiar from over here. Uh, you know, I do it a little bit differently from them. Um, their pattern will work great if there's like a bunch of stuff you want to replace, right? Um, same values and then yeah we just we decide if we're going to replace the thing they do some stuff here where they look at if it's a, at a right angle are we inside you know like if a, if you've got one of those lightning rods that's like collapsed you maybe don't want that one striking lightning because the lightning is going to come out sideways you know ideally maybe a lightning could hit it at the right angle but uh hey 2090 for that one but yeah you know not a lot going on here basically got a global script that runs at like the server level if you will the engine level and it's just saying you know when something is active and what that means is active means when the engine loads the cell when it's acted if we decide we want to replace it which is based on this criteria here if it's a static if it's the record id we want if it's in an exterior fake or real and if it's not at a funny angle then we're going to create the replacement, enable it, teleport it to where it is, and remove the original. Uh, and this pattern could be used to automatically replace anything, right? Like there's dark nuts. Like assuming you can calculate things like what offset, if any, you need from the thing you're replacing. If you know criteria such as angles or anything else, you know, interior, exterior requirements, you could replace anything like a dark nuts... Um, you know, a Dwemer ruins, lit Dwemer ruins. You could do that fairly easily um, with this same pattern, you know, and that's where you might, you might use this pattern here where you got a table of things you want to replace if you had multiple things, you know, or if you wanted to have like some mega mod that does all the replacements in one, you would do something like this. Um, but yeah, so you can see the code not too different from MWSE. Obviously, the specifics are totally different, but um, it's, it's not hard to take what they're doing and implement it in our way, you know, by any means. So I do want to note here, though, there is a known issue. And we've, we've demonstrated this on the stream before. But that is any lightning rod you replace with this mod, when you unload the cell, they're going to disappear. And then they're going to pop in because there's no distant LOD for... Uh, the things that you're created so it's a it's a known issue um i believe it affects zach's ashlander architect mod um yeah so i don't know i don't know if we'll get a fix for this in 0 0.49 object paging seems like a black magic -y part of the engine really so that's the excuse me that's the main caveat of using this right now and also another caveat is it requires 0 0.49 dev build uh because you cannot do stuff like this Excuse me. World create object not available in 0 0.48. Um, that sauce was added after the release was kind of cut off. So, yeah, um, I encourage you to check it out. I'm going to put the link here in the chat. If you're a dev build user, please give it a try. I don't think there's any issues. As you can see here, it's very boring code. Um, aside from the issue I just talked about with object paging. But if you find a problem or if you know of some other you know, mod that could benefit from the Luo replacement magic touch. Let me know. Um, and yeah, eventually my hope is that we can reach out to MD and maybe distribute this alongside the, you know, the real source mod so that, you know, people can get that. Um, I just want to, before we do that, I feel like we should, you know, get this resolved and maybe find any other problems that may exist. But yeah, so check, please check it out. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right, um, and yeah, before we jump into this, I'm going to put this down here. I did want to say another plan that I have for the very short term, you know, being kind of AFK as I punch my mic again, yikes. Being AFK kind of made me realize, like, oh, you know, it would be really great. Like, maybe someday I want to take a vacation, actually. <laughs> Todd forbid I go out of town. It would be cool, though, to, like, allow you folks who are going to keep updating the code and stuff, and I'm so thankful for all you guys. Um, and anybody who's interested in updating the code, if you ever wondered, oh, man, how can I, hey, I, I want to work on the website. How can I do that? Please, you know, reach out on Discord. Ask myself. Um, ask Gonzo. He's becoming a ninja, too. We'll get you up to speed. But one of the things I want to do, yes, Molly, I was like, yeah, we're getting out of here. <laughs> we're going to go to not Solstheim. Somewhere fun. But it made me think we need a way. Uh, <laughs> Covert Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> We need a way, though, 
that we can use. Uh, so I talked previously um, further to Joe Toho's question about publishing mods automatically. Uh, we actually have for the website, as I mentioned, we got a CI pipeline. Right now, all it does is just run my crappy test suite. But what we could do, and what my intention is, every time, uh, for example, we got Gonzo here just hacking away furiously, right? If we've got a merge request, it would be really cool if every single time somebody pushes a code change to the merge request, we could automatically update the beta version of the website. You know, that would be super awesome. Like, as, as we're putting changes on here, you know, Gonzo and I have already collectively put five different changes. And when I do that, I have to come down here and I have to be like, okay, let's let's deploy it, you know. And it would be really cool and technically proper to do if we actually had that. Um, get me out of here. We actually had a pipeline that did this. And so the pipeline, if you aren't familiar with CI and all that stuff, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's a great. That's a great question. So um, let me write this down so it's clear what the pattern would be. So uh, just any commit would deploy to the beta website. A merge to master, which can only happen via MR because I've got rules in GitLab to prevent otherwise. Um, staging deploy. Johnny, what's staging? I have never seen that before. That would be... It's just uh, staging.moddingopenmw.com is a version of the, whoa, whoa. Don't try this at home. Whoa. <laughs> it's a version of the website that's not the main website, but it looks, um, you know, very close to the main website. doesn't have the banner. Um, yeah, okay. So very good call out, Joe Toho. Very, very good call out. Um, we, if there is more than one MR at once, there. so like if – if I'm working on something and Gonzo's working on something and Gonzo pushes and he updates the beta and then I push and then I update the beta, obviously the changes would be clobbered. So this is not a perfect pattern by any means. Um, ideally, we would have like, you know, an easy way to do like a multiple environments or something like that. Um, that's definitely a 2090 thing for sure. Um, and, uh, and, and deploy from forks. I wouldn't want those to run from forks, and I certainly wouldn't want um, anybody from their fork to just push stuff to my server. So, no. That's a big no on that one. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely good call out on the more than MR at once. It's actually a problem that I'm trying to solve at my day job. Because, um, yeah, for sure, you have when you're trying to update something, how do you have multiple people do it? Yeah, so the, the tricky part there, Gonzo, is um, updating the DNS. So now we need a new thing in our Rube Goldberg machine of updating the website. We need a new thing that creates the DNS record that we need, updates the zone file properly, pushes that out to my server, updates the DNS. I actually have two DNS servers, updates them both. Uh, it's doable. You know, that's how services like AWS, they'll give you like an S3 bucket with a special name, you know, you can put in there. Um, they do that. They got like slick machinery to do that. We're simple folk over here, so we'll probably not be dynamically creating DNS anytime soon. But yeah, I mean, that would be, you know, pretty good. Yeah, so actually, yeah, Joe Toho, that's exactly what I was thinking about. Like we could maybe leverage like folders. So it wouldn't be beta because right now the web server configuration for beta says slash proxy it to the Django process to Python. Um, so it would be maybe something like, uh, you know, like M uh, MR builds or something like that. And then it would be a branch name, you know. And then, yeah, we could easily, just with one uh, DNS name, you could easily see your, you know, your work. That's a really good approach. I think, wow. So we might, you know, when I actually finally dig into this, so going a little bit further, I didn't actually started describing the, the the pattern here and I didn't actually describe the rest of it. So right now I'm using Ansible. When I deploy and, and you see all this happening, this is some intricate Ansible. Uh, 
intricate Ansible machinery that I wrote, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Um, I've been using Ansible for a long time, and, and um, you know, as with anything in life, the more you do it, especially over 10 years, you get better at doing things. But this has worked hundreds of times or more flawlessly. It does exactly what I need. It's just not very efficient. Every time I deploy, I'm like doing everything that's needed to set up the full server. Um, yeah, exactly right. And that will boil, good call out, Joe Toho. That'll boil down to the Nginx configuration, which is the web server we're using, um, which is burying the lead a little bit. But yeah, so I'm using a tool called Ansible to deploy the website and also uh, to configure the server that runs the website. And so the bits that I will be building here, um, Ansible has like a way businessy website that are probably not worth looking at, but this is the doc website, which I haven't looked at in years. Worth checking out though. Um, but the bits that I'm gonna open source are gonna be the app config, app deploy bits. What I am not going to be open sourcing are gonna be the server setup bits because there's like, the configuration of the web server itself and then there's the configuration of the website's web server needs and those are distinct um you know there's the securing the server you know setting up a firewall locking down services that kind of stuff um maybe someday we'll open source that too but just for now it's going to be what i need to quickly update the contents of the website or put it out there you know um and and it'll be good to decouple that because again right now it's all just Ansible soup doing everything every time and it takes it takes a long time you know when did we well, let's say we started this two three minutes ago you know it's gonna take maybe ten minutes to run so um and and yeah oh sorry actually psh, look at me I can read um put this under here but run via CI whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. don't try this at home going to run via CI to enable auto updates, merge to master, and then how we update the real website, moddingopenmw.com itself, we do a tag push. Um, so we'll have, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll short, this will be a kind of a short term. And long term we'll have this pattern where, you know, hey, it'd be great to have multiple MRs open, right? Lots of people hacking on the website. Um, Want to give them a way to be able to see their code on the real site in a safe way that's not going to inundate the server, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, this is something that is like, you know, being being a away from the project for kind of a couple weeks out of necessity. It made me realize, like, yeah, it would be really cool. We can keep things flowing you know they were absolutely flowing amazingly enough uh under the stewardship of gonzo and herdrax and sophie and everybody else and i love you all thank you so much um i want to do my part to help that machine flow as well and i think keeping giving you a way to see your changes on the website without me getting in the mix um is going to be a good thing so we got just a couple minutes left in the stream so i just wanted to quickly go into uh gitlab issues review let's wrap that up We'll wrap this up here. And uh, thank you so much, Eltariel, for submitting some of these UL issues here. And I just want to say, I glanced at them quickly and I noted um, <laughs> your comment here. Please don't nuke UL from mod lists because of these tiny issues. And I just want to say, UL is one of those mods that I feel like is an instant classic. It's timeless, especially if you're playing House Telvani. You just, you gotta have it. It's not perfect. It definitely is... <sighs> I feel like some sections of it could use some nerfing, you know, um, debatable. Um, and yeah, some of the, you know, not all the writing is like, uh, the most utmost lore friendly, but it's a classic mod and yeah, it, I would be very hard pressed to remove UL ever and the related mods. So yeah, thank you for these. Um, I'm hoping we can come up with, uh, some good approaches to fixing these. And it's also awesome to know that you're doing some play testing. Really appreciate that. Now is the time folks. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what I was thinking too, right? Um, I digress. You know, it's from a different era, and it's still amazing work. I love Superstar, Superstar's work. Um, now is the time, folks, though, if you want to join in on the testing, if you want to help us out with um, 
I'm going to try to commit some time today and or tomorrow to put the rest of the stuff we're adding for 6.x on here. Um, awesome. Cool. Glad to hear that, Joe Toho. Yeah. Uh, we're always looking for cool suggestions, ideas, or if you're playing and you know about a, a problem, certainly let us know. Um, you don't have to you don't have to use our mod lists to be part of the community or and many you don't you know or to help us out you know and so i'm very thankful for all you folks that uh, that do but yeah i want to round this out there's like a i think a fine we're in the final stretch of stuff that we're going to add as you can see here there's a lot of strike throughs and i just want to take a moment to give mad props to herdrax and gonzo for while i was out just knocking all this out um hopefully by the end of this weekend what we need to do is we need to take the 5.10 branch and we need to merge it with this work. And that's a little, uh, you know, there's like a hundred commits here. Um, but once we do, we'll be deploying this to the beta so folks can take a look at it, get a taste of what 6.0 is going to look like. But there's also like, yeah, a bunch of quest mods that are still going to get added. If we, uh, we just go here, take a sneak peek at my config. Let me scroll all the way down here. Right, so when I stopped adding, whoop, when I stopped adding stuff to this issue, I left off right here at the quest section. And, you know, each year we are graced with so many awesome quest mods that come out of the mod jams and the modathons, and it just keeps piling up. We got, you know, AF Fresh and, and all kinds of cool things that have landed and so this is basically the last big stretch um and you might note that there's some like daedric shrine overhauls lumped in here we're gonna have to do some like shuffling of the categories i think but uh, gonzo and i have some cool ideas and herdrax for you folks um for the mod list setup like imagine if we had all the bcom patches just listed as one mod instead of 30 different ones it's happening folks i assure you um, so yeah, we're going to try to make time to put that in there and, and get the 6.0 list rounded out. And I'm very thankful for any playtesting feedback that people are doing, calling attention to issues like this um, and, and you know, other things between mods. Um, when you're adding 400 mods, it's really hard to QA all of it. So I certainly appreciate the, the feedback. And there's some things in here. Let's see, Vampire. By our friend Detail Devil, but also... I didn't add it in here yet. Let's see here. This is one. I feel like vampires in Morrowind are just, you only do it if you're morbidly curious, right? But this one, this is a 6.0 edition. I haven't actually played with it yet. Super curious, you know, how it's gonna work out. Um, I mean, wow. <laughs> so yeah, um, we'll get there and hopefully you know, hopefully we can get a 6.0 beta that's we're confident in around the time. Awesome. Yeah, I was just going to say, hopefully we can get the 6.0 beta, like, locked in in a pretty good place for the next TR update. And we can have that all and see how it all... So our intention... Yeah, I know, right, Gonzo? I agree. Oof. Our intention beats... Herdrax, Gonzo, and I have decided that what we want to do is... Um, and I would love for everybody to join us is once we kind of get this nailed down right... Um, I have way too many tabs open. Ah, uh, yeah, just a quick look at this one, though, by our friend Detail Devil. I'm really looking forward to this. Some gameplay tweaks. Requires a dev build of OpenMW, but some vampire gameplay tweaks. Um, but, yeah, once we get this locked down and we got the beta version of the website that you can follow along with, definitely we're going to need some play testers, right? Because our, our t intention is, before we actually launch 6.0, we got this huge list of stuff, right? 500 mods, probably. But does it all work together? Does it all, you know, I'm going to add like, I'm going to add all these quest mods, but like, did they really work together? We don't want to launch until we're reasonably sure, right? Um, and so we've got a lot of good suggestions that people have <clears throat> thrown our way. Ronick, Sophie, and many others. Um, and so I really, really appreciate your contributions and we'll get there soon. So yeah. Cool. Well, I did just deploy the website. I'm going to check that off. Um, there was this final part here that we didn't quite get to. Um, and this is stuff for 6.0. But we have an issue that I believe Gonzo actually put an issue on GitLab for. But if you have a custom CFG generator query, what is that, Johnny? 
Well, what you can do, you might not know that you can go to the CFG generator, you can pick a preset, and then you can come down here and you can say, but I also want Caldera apparatus. And you can control click to add it. You can click submit query, and now you got a custom mod list. Unfortunately, um, what happens is we give you the completely wrong plugin order. Whoops. And I kind of was hoping it would be a fairy fix, uh, one line fix. Yeah. We, Honestly, I do agree. Um, we'll talk more about this maybe tomorrow because I've been playing with a mostly vanilla setup that has the Caldera uh, exploit. And, uh, you know, not going to lie. I used it. I grabbed them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this so we got to fix the the ordering here because this is completely wrong. Um, yeah, no shame. I used it. <laughs> and then Gonzo made a good point here. Uh, one of the things we're doing here that's kind of weird uh, wow, look at this, yeah. Whew. Hey. Is that right, Gonzo? Did we did we fix this accidentally? <laughs> um, but I think it's... Cause, hmm. You tell me if that's right, Gonzo. Look on 6.0.0. Oh, okay. I got you. So we don't actually have a live version of the website we could look at with this problem. But yeah, there was an issue with how we present these and the ordering that we present these on the mod detail page. And the idea is like this is not something that you should really use, right? Like when you're configuring your game, you're going to go to the CFG generator and you're going to get the config from there. This is not like a – unless you're carefully piecemealing a setup yourself. And even then, the hope is you could just use a CFG generator. So, yeah, it's a change to how we present this information. Um, and then this is actually on the second to last stream that we did a month ago and back a month ago now um, is the CFG generator feature where – we, had, we would give people a list of the mods that are used in the config loadout with checkboxes, and they could select or deselect things as needed. So, like, maybe they don't want natural character growth and decay. Cool. Uncheck it, you know. Um, and one of the plans we have for 6.0 is a dev build only section of stuff that requires a dev build that would be, in such a scenario, deselected by default. You click your preset, you get the checkbox list, and you could, hey, I want the dev build stuff. Give it to me, you know, and you could check them and get your get your special query. So, yeah. Um, it was a bit more, you know, we Gonzo and I had a little powwow the other night and tried to, you know, last night, and we tried to decide, like, is this doable? Are we going to do this in the stream tomorrow? I was, like, feeling confident, but it turns out these are a bit more complicated to implement. Um, so we'll gradually, you know, put those out there over time. But, yeah, okay, well... It's that time, folks, and I am so glad that everybody is here today. It's so glad, good to be back, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day, and happy modding.